Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that only you are God. All other gods are the works of men's hands. You created everything. We bless you. We thank you that we are related to you. We're your sons and we're your daughters. Thank you for your hand of grace that's outstretched towards this fellowship. Father, as we continue to pursue you, your promise that when we seek you, we will find you. Lord, that we may find your face in every area of our lives, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we know that if we have your face, we have your hand. We give you glory and praise as we go into the word. Breathe upon your word afresh. Let it become alive in our spirits. Give us the grace to walk in the countenance and in the light of what we are learning. <clears throat> Let men look at us and say, indeed, these ones are disciples of the master. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to Bible study. This is, I believe, Bible Fellowship. We're in Houston, Texas. And we're a bunch of believers who love the Lord unashamedly and unreservedly. We study scriptures here. Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept. We study the Bible verse by verse because we believe no one jumps about the chapters, paragraphs, sentences in the book. You'll never understand the book or the mind of the author. And so we read the Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 21-22. That way we know what our father is saying. We understand to the degree that he grants us the grace to understand. And we certainly walk in the light of it. We've been studying the New Testament and we're in the book of Matthew. I believe last week we stopped at uh, chapter 8. So we should be picking up from chapter 9 this morning. Praise God. As a quick recap, Matthew presents Jesus to us as the king of the Jews, which he was. It's just that they didn't recognize him and they didn't receive him as one. Uh, and uh, it opens with the genealogy of Jesus, establishing his uh, humanity. You can trace his pedigree back to Abraham, to David. So we know that he walked on the checkered pavement of this our mortal existence. And he lived victoriously to show us that we too, we can live victoriously as long as we do what he has commanded us to do. Praise God, chapter nine. <clears throat> and he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of palsy lying on a bed. And Jesus in their faith said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house. Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that behold need not a physician. For they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners 
to repentance. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn, as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, runneth out and the bottles perish. They put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. Come and lay thine hand upon her, and she shall live. And behold, a woman which was deceived, and Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman with, was, which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good cheer, be of good, good, good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. And touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus strictly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. When the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. And the multitudes marveled, saying, was never so seen in Israel. The Pharisees said he casted out devils through the prince of the devils. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sick, every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Praise God forever. <laughs> There goes my part. Praise God. All right. <clears throat> Chapter 9 continues to unfold to us the beginnings of the uh, ministry of Jesus. Uh, right after his water baptism and open endorsement by the Father, the Bible says he was driven by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to fast and to pray couple of lessons from there before you start anything major in your life it would be wise to fast and to pray that was his example starting a new job fast and pray moving to a new city fast and pray arriving in a new city fast and pray any major decision or major move this is what we see the master doing and i don't think anyone is as wise or as knowing as he is. Not only does it prepare you for whatever is to come, it also breaks up the fallow ground and makes it easy for you to plant roots wherever it is that you, you have moved to or whatever it is that you want to do. 
all right? We can't practice Christianity the way we see it in the world, all right? God is not having you going through this because he doesn't have anything to do with his time. Certainly there's something he wants to do in your life for him to submit you to this level of tutelage, all right? So he comes, he goes into the wilderness, driven by the spirit of God. And like I told you, for you, not for himself. He's God. He knows who he is. And he knows the devil cannot tempt him. But if he didn't, like he told John, fulfill all righteousness by dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's, he would not be able to say, I am a high priest that is not acquainted with the feelings of your infirmities. He did those things so that he can show you that you can do it. He did it while in the flesh so that he can show you that you can do it. And he came back and he began his threefold ministry, teaching, preaching, healing, teaching, preaching, healing. Any man of God or woman of God that's not teaching, preaching, healing, I don't know what they're doing. That's just the truth. Anybody can come up with programs. Anybody can come up with stuff. But if what you're doing is not underscored by these three activities, you're not making disciples. And what he has commanded us to do is to go and to make disciples. The word make suggests an intentionality to what we're doing. All right? My car didn't just, all the pieces, the iron, the, the aluminum, the plastic, they all didn't just meet one day and just jump and say, hey, let's hook up and let's be a car. Somebody sat down, designed it, and began to make it. That's how you should be with your work with God and with the people that you love, the people that are around you. Make disciples. I don't have access to the people you have access to. So you have a responsibility to make disciples of them. All right. In chapter 9, the Bible says he passed over to Capernaum, to his own city. And they brought to him a man that was sick of palsy. When we finish with the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see that each uh, disciple paid attention to different things. Some things they just skipped over. And some things they gave detail. Uh, when we see the other Gospels, you will see that this chapter 9 is more detailed. But I don't want to run ahead of myself and, and, and the class so that when we get there, we can see and we can go back and compare. Anyway, they brought this man sick of palsy lying in the bed. And the Bible says Jesus saw their faith. Is faith tangible? Can you see it? Can you hear it? Can you smell it? Can you taste it? Can you feel it? How do you see my faith? You see my faith by my works. Don't tell me you have faith if I don't see corresponding works. Don't tell me you trust God if at every bump in the road you're crying. If you've been with me three months, you should be weaning yourself off the bottle by now. Unless you're not serious. You have gotten more word in the three months you've been here than in the three months you've been in your church. Not to take anything away from your church or your pastor, but you don't go there every day. You're here every day and you're hearing the word of life undiluted every day. You should put the bottle away. Let's start with, not bone, but let's start with oats. Leave the milk. Let's do oats. Let's, let's do some, uh, some uh, blended peas. Let's do some blended carrots. All right. He saw their faith because there was corresponding works. They carried the man and they brought him to Jesus. 
Like I said, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but I can't help myself. This is the same account of the guys, four guys, who took down the roof. The place where Jesus was was packed, and they couldn't get in. They climbed the house, and they took the roof down so that they could put their sick friend in front of Jesus. If that's not faith, I don't know what is. But you'll come to Luke, who gives a better account of it. And you'll see. Faith without works is dead. Jay, look for that scripture and put it up. If you say you have faith, show me the corresponding works. That's how I will believe you have faith. Lay hands. Never mind if they don't get healed. You lay hands. He said you should lay hands. He will heal. So if I lay hands, you don't get healed. It's not on me. It's on him. So you can go out and say, Pastor Mo talks all the time. She laid hands. My headache is still there. You can say what you like. He told me to lay hands. He will heal your headache. And if he doesn't, he reserves the right not to. He's God. Do it. Be bold. And don't be afraid. First time it doesn't work, great, do it again. Second time it doesn't work, fine, do it again. A third time, do it again. Fifteenth time, do it again. A hundredth time, do it again. It will work. Because it does. Glory to Jesus. And then he said to him, son, be of good chair. Thy sins be forgiven thee. He addressed him as son. To let us know that he's father. Because only the father can forgive sin. These are the things that point to the hypostatic union of Jesus Christ's deity. You can Google hypostatic union of deity. Jesus was 100% man, 100% God. He wasn't half man, half God. He would operate as man. And you would see that this was man operating. And then he would operate as God. And you could tell this is God. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. That's not man talking. Who can you give rest? That was God talking. When he said let's go over to the other side. That was God talking. He knew there was going to be a storm. That was going to be life threatening. But he's God. And I've, I've been stressing it in the last three weeks. You say it before you see it. Let's go over to the other side. And they went to the other side, regardless of the storm. And God said, and it was so. And God said, and it was so. And Mo said, and it was so. It will be so. All right. Son, be a good chair. My laptop just crashed. <laughs> hey! Glory to God. <laughs> Can you check and see what's wrong with it? Let me have that. <laughs> so I don't forget it. <laughs> we are not friends. <laughs> and he knows. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. <laughs> All right. They started to complain. <clears throat> and Jesus knew, verse 4, their thoughts. That's God. 
Only God can know the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he challenged them. Why are you thinking the things you're thinking? What's up with you? Glory to God. And then he poses the question, which is easier for me to say, take up your bed and walk. Or for me to say, your sins are forgiven you. Obviously, take up your bed and walk is easier. But so that you know that I know who I am and I know what I'm capable of doing. I said, your sins be forgiven you because I can forgive sin. And you and I know that only God can forgive sin. So there's ample proof and evidence that Jesus Christ is God. Amen. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth. He took it out of that dimension of being God. He brought it into the dimension of being man. Man can forgive sin. And that's why it's required of you to forgive sin. You cannot hold sin against anybody because you, your very self, you're a sinner. I am a sinner. So what temerity, what audacity to say, I'm, I'm never gonna forgive him. Like they say, I think it was Nelson Mandela who said it. He said, Unforgiveness is like me drinking poison and waiting for you to die. It's never going to happen. You forgive not because the person deserves it. You forgive because you want your heart free. And you want your, your connection to God without static. You release the person. Let the person go. It's not worth your peace of mind. It's not worth your relationship with God is not worth the consequences of unforgiveness. Some sicknesses and diseases are as a result of unforgiveness. Cancer usually comes as a result of un unforgiveness. There have been many testimonies to that, to that fact. All right. So he said, but that you may know that the son of man hath power on earth to forgive sin, then saith he unto the sick of palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. So as a man, he made a, pronounce, a pronouncement, your sins be forgiven you. I mean, as God, he made a pronouncement, your sins be forgiven you. As a man capable of working miracles because of the grace and the spirit of God upon the man, he said, arise, take up your bed, and walk. Child of God, either way you slice it, you come out on top. As a cat of his presence, I'm a winner. As a redeemed child of his, I am a winner. There's nothing you can do about it. It's a done deal. He said on the cross, it is finished. If it's finished, what's left? And the, bar, the young man arose and departed to his house. When the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God. They glorified God, which had done what? Given such power to only pastors. Look in your Bible, talk to me. They glorified God, who had given such power to only evangelists. Is that what your Bible says? They glorified God, who has given such powers to apostles, to men, everyone, to the saints, every body, every child of God. Is it up and running? Okay. I can go back in there. What's that game you play with chairs? Musical chairs. Musical chairs. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, the devil is a liar and the father of it. Thank you, 
Yeah. So the man went to his house and the Bible says they glorified God who has given such power unto men. And in I believe Bible church, that power will be demonstrated. Glory to God. Jesus passed forth from there. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. Matthew is writing in the third voice. And so he was not the one who wrote the book. But it's him. And he was a tax collector for the, um, for the Romans uh, who were then ruling all over uh, the then world. All right. Praise God. Matthew was the first uh, disciple that we see that he called, right? Thank you, Jesus. In any case, Jesus called his disciples based on their personality, based on their vocation, based on whatever that they were. Because in the church, you will find mixed bags. And we have to be able to work together. If you look at the personality types of all the disciples, they're, they're just so different from one another. About six or seven of them are not even heard of. All right. So um, immediately he arose and followed Jesus. No excuses. He followed him. He didn't tell him, let me go do this first or uh, I, I will see you next week or I will try to make it. He followed him immediately. The Bible says Jesus sat at meat in his house. I know uh, Matthew says in the house. In Mark and in Luke, it says in his house. Jesus had a house. He wasn't a poor man. And his disciples, they all came. Many publicans and sinners also came. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, why is your master eating with publicans and sinners? All right. As though they were not sinners themselves. But when Jesus heard, he said to them, I didn't come for the well. I came for the sick. It's the people that are sick that need a physician. So if you see them around me, it's for their sake that I came. They go and learn what this scripture means. And he quotes scriptures to them. He quotes Hosea chapter 6 verse 6 to them. He says, I will have mercy on who I will have mercy on. That's God's prerogative. All right. He quotes that scripture to them. And he says, go and check it out. I'm not come to call the righteous <clears> or <throat> sinners to repentance. And then the disciples of John came to him and says, why do we fast often and your own disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, what do they need fasting and prayer for? I'm here. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they don't need that. But the time is coming when I will be taken away from them, then they will have to fast and pray. All right. You know how it is when we were kids, if there was a bully in, in, in school, when you see him or her, you take the, the other hallway. <laughs> but if, if you happen to be with an older brother or an older sister, you will strut in front of that bully because you know they can't touch you. Your big brother is there. That's exactly how it is with us and the devil. What's that song? Da, 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 can touch this. <laughs> <laughs> can't touch this glory to God <laughs> praise God forevermore <laughs> wow Jesus said to them can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them and then they shall fast so we're fasting and we're praying now because he's been taken away from us although he's with us in spirit uh, we got to stay sharp. That's why we fast and we pray. Deny this stupid thing called flesh. 
and tell it to go sit down somewhere. Huh? Dead men don't talk, right? So why is your flesh talking to you? Why are you listening to it? Glory to God. Amen. Jesus said, no man puts a piece of new cloth on an old garment. All right. If there's a rip on an old fabric and you go and sew a new fabric on it, it's just going to rip it the more. Because what the, what the new fabric can take, the old fabric can't anymore. And he says, no man puts wine in old skin bottles because it will, it will rip the bottles. But you put it in a new skin bottle so that both the bottle and the wine is preserved. All right, talking about the new birth. The way we were, we, are, we were incapable of carrying his presence. That's the difference between you and a non-believer. And I don't know how you can have a non-believer as your boyfriend or your girlfriend. I don't understand it. You obviously don't know who you are or what you carry. Your body is the temple of the living God. And you think it's yours and you can do what you like with it. You lie. To the extent that I can take it away with a, with a magnum, what do they call those guns now? It's not your life. You cannot preserve it. You can't. It's my life, it's my body. I'm going to do what I want. You're going to do what? People are so fortunate that I'm not God. Because if I was God, I would show you what's mine. You can't live any which way you want to. Glory to Jesus. I know stuff is going on on the chat. Nate, be careful. You're about to go to the corner. Because you're laughing too hard. I can't see the chats, but I know stuff is going on. Glory to God. So Jesus said, I need to recreate your spirit so that I can come in there and live. What's so Paul said, it is no longer I that live. Look for that scripture. For Christ that lives in me. He said, the life I live now, I live by the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's no longer the old me. I died in 1976. If you Google Christ that liveth in me, it will come out. King James. It's Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. It is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. He said, this life that you see me living now, I live by the Son of God. He had to recreate our spirit so he could put his presence in there. And you walk around like you're an ordinary man. You're not. The very power that created the entire universe lives in you. When somebody tells you to talk to the universe. And you're talking to the universe and you're releasing to the universe. I'm sorry for you. Verse 17, neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out. And the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him and said, My daughter is even now dead. His daughter was dead. It was a fact. Look at the faith of the man. He didn't call the funeral parlor. 
He didn't start to make arrangements. He said, leave my daughter in her bedroom. I'll be right back. And went to Jesus, knowing that the child was dead. Saying to Jesus, the child is dead. I'm not denying that fact. But I know that if you show up because you're alive, the child will live again. What faith? What stubborn, tenacious faith? That in the face of death and calamity, still believes. But come and lay thine hand upon her, and she shall live. He said it before it happened. That's the principle. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. At IBBC, the cripple walk. At IBBC, blind eyes are open. At IBBC, the deaf hear. At IBBC, the mute speak. At IBBC, cancer bows. At IBBC, Stuff happens. Demons scream out of people. Glory to Jesus. Jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples. And on his way, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, for 12 years she had been hemorrhaging. The human body carries only 10 pints of blood, 10 pints. I think you should go to your kitchen, get a measuring cup and measure out 10 pints and look at it. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Times 139. And Satan tells you you're ugly, you're short, you're fat, you're thin, you're dark, you're light skinned. Uh, light, the black, uh, and you listen to that trash. You're not worthy. Nobody loves you. Look at you. You don't have friends. You're not popular. You're not famous. Tells you all kinds of nonsense, and you 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 stay on that channel, and you listen to that channel. And the principle of the word of God is true. Faith cometh by hearing. So you're hearing, you're ugly, you're useless, you're worthless. You will believe it. Because faith comes by hearing. It's a law. It doesn't only say faith comes by hearing good things. Listen, somebody broke down television to me two years ago. Why is it called television? And some of y'all are addicted to it. Television, tell a vision. So they're telling you a vision. They're putting in front of you what they want you to see. All you young moms who babysit your children with cartoon and Disney World and all that nonsense, with all the subliminal messages that's in it, Tom and Jerry banging each other with frying pan, and you think it's comedy, you think it's funny? That's violence. They packaged witchcraft as comedy. They began to sensitize this country in the early 60s. I dream of Ginny, Adam's family, Bewitched. They've not progressed to where it's just outright, outright abomination. Advertisements. They show you a man and a man. They show you a woman and a woman. What one generation tolerates, the next will accept. 
That's why we're where we're at. This woman had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. Imagine the amount of money she must have spent trying to fix whatever is causing the bleeding. And I don't know that they had the ability then to give blood. Now we can do tra blood transfusion. I don't know that in Bible times they could. Maybe there was stuff they ate or, you know, herbs or whatever. I don't know. But she was bleeding for 12 solid years. And the Bible records in the book of Luke that she had spent everything she had. Matthew doesn't give us that little detail, but it's important. She came to the end of herself and she started to say, if I touch his garment, if I can just touch the hem of his, it's not the hem of the garment that's important. What she was trying to say is even the tiniest part of this man, Jesus, if I can just reach him and touch him, it's not about the hem or the sleeve or the collar. No. Any part of him that I can touch. My life will change. She said it. The original tense is in present continuous in the Greek. If you have, uh, what's the name of this resource? Concordance. A concordance, but there's another one. I'll post it if I find it. I know I have it. It's like a chain reference of, of uh, Greek words. Strong's Dictionary. It's not that. It's another one. When I, when I find it, I know I have it. When I find it, I'll post it. All right? Bible says she came behind him and touched the hem of his garment, for she said within herself, if I'm able to touch his garment. Bible doesn't even say the hem. Maybe another uh, report says the hem. But she says, if I'm able to touch his garment, I shall be whole. Jesus turned about when he saw her and he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith. The faith she had moved her to do something. She didn't sit at home crying. She didn't jump on the phone calling folks. Do something. Give God something to multiply. Give him something to work with. And the woman was made whole from that hour. When Jesus came to the ruler's house, he saw the minstrels and the people making a noise. And he said to them, excuse me, guys, she's not dead. Jesus refused to agree with what he saw. Now you can understand why I'm stubborn. I refuse to agree with anything Satan has to say. If it is related to his ministry, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I refuse to believe it. I refuse to be moved by it. I refuse to react. I told you on Sunday when I was ministering, a snake came into my room. My son said, run out. I said, no. Who does that? No, I got to know where it's going. If they come back and they cannot find it, can I continue to live in my house? The enemy was trying to dispossess me of something the boy had sworn to do at age 10. Glory to Jesus. He said, give place, verse 24, for the maid is not dead, but sleeper. Speak. And do the exact opposite of what you're feeling. You're not led by feelings. You're led by the spirit of the living God. In your human spirit. God, what are you saying about this? I see it. Yes, the child is dead. I see it. But what do you have to say? I am the resurrection and the life. Whatever is dead in your life. Be resurrected this morning. In the name of Jesus. 
every dream, every vision, every ambition be resurrected in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Some of you have stuff that God has told you to do. You're looking at yourself. You better quit looking at yourself. It's not in you. All the nonsense they say on social media, it's, it's within you. There's nothing within you if God is not there. They're walking cadaver if you're not born again. The spirit is not alive. And your flesh is dying. You can show it up with all the makeup in the world. It is still aging. You can't stop it. You can't reverse it. One day, they will quit on you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Resuscitate those dreams. Bring out those notes. Bring out that design. Bring out the manuscript. And quit looking at yourself. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than any obstacle that's in the world. But who are thou, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? The Bible says you shall become plain. Glory to God. They laughed him to scorn. Yes, they will laugh you to scorn. Guess who's going to laugh last? Guess who's going to roar last? It won't even be a laughter. It will be a roar. Now say what you like now. I think this is what, 20 people? It's okay. Wait. Glory to God. They laughed him to scorn. But when he put people out, put people out. There's some people that don't belong in your life. I don't care who they are. Love them, honor them, serve them. But they don't belong. They don't belong in your decision-making process. Because they will show you all the bots that's in your plan. He put those without faith out. He put those who were arguing with him. The child is dead. The physician, the physician has come. And the child was pronounced dead at 1202. Okay, outside. They went inside with the mom and the dad were told in the other gospel because they were in faith. They wanted their child back. He said, Talita Kumi, damsel, I say unto you, Arise. For nothing shall be impossible to him that believeth. Nothing. Nothing. And his fame, Herod went abroad into all that land. Jesus left the place, two blind men followed him, crying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. He didn't answer them until he got home. We don't know why. <laughs> but he brought them home. And then he asked them, do you believe I can do this? And they said, yes, Lord, we do. Belief is the work part of faith. Faith is the intangible part. Can't see it. Belief will make you take steps because you believe. And that's what lets me know that you have faith. Jesus needed for them to say it before they see it. That's the principle. It's all over scriptures. He got to say it. He could have looked in their hearts. And seeing that they believe. If they didn't believe, why did they keep following him all the way to his house? They could have turned back and said, he's not even minding us. Let's go home. They followed him. That's belief at work. Have mercy on us. He didn't answer them. He took a left turn. Have mercy on us. He didn't answer them. He walked straight down Jerusalem Street. 
He didn't answer them. He took a right turn. Have mercy on us. That by itself was belief in action. They were following him and they were asking for what they wanted. But he still wanted them to say, do you believe I can open your eyes? Say it, child of God. Say it, say it, say it. Don't let the devil shut your mouth. Say it. Say it. You're living in the studio. Guys are moving to a three-bedroom three apartment. They're looking at you like, <laughs> say it. They're living in a three-bedroom apartment. Guys, I'm getting ready to buy a three-bedroom home. Say it. I just bought the house three doors away. Jay was here. Jaleel was here. Jada was here. They saw the miracle unfold. The house had been on sale. <clears throat> I looked at it. I said, Lord, should I buy it? I didn't get an answer. In my heart, I felt I should. But I, I didn't have the faith initially. Then they took the sign down. And I said, oh, well, this is it. And then I saw this uh, SUV parked in the driveway. And I saw this couple. So I walked up to them and I said, are you guys doing open house or something? It was for sale a while ago. Or did you buy it? Turns out the lady was a realtor. <clears throat> no, the man was a realtor. The lady was a mortgage broker. I said to them, I'm, I'm interested in the house. What are my options? And they gave me a long, a long list of this, that, and the other. <clears throat> Still not having heard from God whether I should buy it or not. But I had said, and I'm still saying, that I will buy the entire block. It will happen. There's seven more to buy. I've been saying it, it will happen. And I will come and testify when it happens. Glory to God. So I put in a, an application with these people. Let me switch that off. I don't know who that is. I put an application in with these people. And they were, you know, forming the full, all kinds of things was, was just going wrong. And uh, Somebody else bid higher. And they came to me and said, well, we're sorry. Somebody else bid higher. Um, yeah, you know, what you wanted to pay was not accepted. I told the guy, I said, the house is mine. Nobody's buying it. I texted him. It's in writing. I can show you. I said, the house is mine. Nobody's buying it. I don't care how much they bid. He, re he replied to me and said, uh, I feel you. I like the affirmation. <laughs> I told him, I said, it's not an affirmation. It's a fact. Whatever happened, happened. That deal fell through. It went back on the market. Then I bid again. And every time I would drive by the house, I'd point at it and say, Father, thank you. I received my house. Every time I would pull in front of it, I would point at it and say, Father, thank you. I received my house. I closed in what? Six weeks or seven weeks? You have not because you ask not. And God is going to prosper me while IBBC is still small. So no one is going to open their mouths and say she used the church money to do what she did. Praise God forevermore. Say it. If you say it, you will see it. He touched their eyes. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Their eyes were opened. Jesus charged them. See that no man know it. It's not possible, Lord. They used not to see. And now they can see. And you're saying that see no man knows it. All right. As they went out, a man brought him. They brought him a man dumb. Possessed with the devil. This is how you know that not all problems are medical. There's usually a spiritual root. And medicine can analyze it. I have nothing wrong with medicine. I've been a beneficiary of medicine. I wear glasses. I have good teeth.
I haven't given them the opportunity to make money from me because I don't fall ill. I know what to do. But at least I went to the hospital three times and I had three babies and I had great medical care. I have no problem with medicine. But some of these things have a spiritual root. And until you deal with the root, you'll just be spinning the circles. This fellow was dumb, but it was the devil. And once you remove that dimension, the healing was imminent. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake and the multitudes marveled because it was never so seen in Israel. It will be said that it was never so seen in Houston. But the Pharisees said, ah, he cast out devils through the prince of devils. Jesus responded to them, but it's another account that, that, that uh, records it. He said, every house divided against itself will not stand. How can Satan cast out Satan? He'll be working counter his purpose. Jesus went about all the cities and villages doing what? Teaching. Thank God for this teaching ministry. Guys, I say it with all humility. I marvel at what God is doing. I write notes. If you see my notes on what I end up preaching, they're miles apart. But I do my due diligence. And then I come. And I, 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 I'm, I'm standing outside of it all and I'm seeing the manifestation of the gift. What is your gift? And what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? I spent years studying. What are you doing with it? Maybe the manifestation of whatever it is is not now. But you have to start to build the foundation now. What is your gift? The Bible says if you don't bring your own supply, this body will not be jointly fit. Ephesians 4.16. The body is fitted jointly and compacted by what every joint supplies. What are you bringing to the body? He went about teaching. <clears throat> he went about preaching. And he preached the gospel of the kingdom. And he was healing every sickness and every disease without exception but when the multitudes but when he saw the multitudes he was moved to compassion because they fainted you know when you're under the anointing you don't feel tired I can teach for eight hours I can, I can keep going because when you're under the anointing you don't feel it it's when you're done that your body begins to feel. Jesus saw them following him. He had the strength to do what he was doing because he was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But they were men, men and they were fainting. And he turned around and he had compassion on them. He was like, that's why he fed 5,000 men with five loaves and two fish. He had compassion on them because they had been following him almost all day. They had never seen anything like that in Israel. The Bible says he had a compassion because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. And there were Pharisees and Sadducees and Levites and the priesthood in Israel. Yet God's people were without a shepherd. Said to his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous the laborers are few. One man can't do this. 
It's not possible. My eye cannot say to my hand, I don't need you. My foot cannot say to my ear, I don't need you. It's got to be all of us. What are you bringing to the table? It says, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into the harvest. People around you need to hear the gospel. People around you need to see the fruit and the evidence of what the gospel is doing in your life. The Bible says we're epistles known and read of all men. But the Bible that some of these unbelievers read, they won't go to church. So is your life testifying? Is your mouth testifying? Are you shouting it from the rooftop? You can't be around me for two minutes without knowing. Because I will channel the discussion to the word. And I will leave you with the word. And what you do with it thereafter is between you and God. There has to be an intentionality. You're affecting the people within your sphere of influence. Questions? Any questions? Thank you, Lord God. Tiffany? Hi, yes. Good morning, Pastor Mo. How are you? I'm awesome. <laughs> so, um, I'm working, so I always knew that I had the gift of healing for many years. Um, and right now, my, um, well, someone that's in my family, he, you know, he came over one day, my son's father, he came over one day and he couldn't breathe or whatever. He was having trouble with his breathing. So I laid hands on him and he was kind of resisting it, but I knew, you know, um, my gift. So he got healed. He called, well, he called me back and was like, you know, I, I can breathe, you know, and he couldn't believe it. So he came back again because he, he's like, I need you to do that thing again. Mm -hmm. But I heard you say, I heard you say that you can keep healing and keep healing. And so he came back again yesterday. He said, Tiffany is crazy. He's like, you have some crazy energy. He said, you have a gift and you need to figure out how to use it. And you just said, like, how are you using your gift? So I went online and I was like, well, how can I use my gift of healing to like serve others? Like, how could I do that? So he, he woke me up at six o'clock this morning. He's like, I need you to do that again. <laughs> I'm like, but I didn't think that at first I was like, well, it's not working. But he said, no, I was able to breathe great all yesterday. And so he, he came back, he's back again. Like, I need you to do that. I'm like, go to the doctor. He's like, no, I need you to heal me. Like, I need you to do that again, because, you know, I don't know if he's scared to go to the doctor or just what, but you was like, I heard you say like, heal him again and lay hands on him again. If you say it don't work, but he's saying it does work, but he wants me to keep healing him. Like, how often do I have to do that? Or two like, things, two things. Okay. You, he needs, you need, you need to point him to Jesus. I did have him before I even healed him. I did that. First off, you didn't heal him. Okay. Jesus is the healer. You well, he know the... that. I told him that. I said yeah. it was God. I for All sure. Right. And he Good. used me to heal you for sure. I know, I know it's not me. Then say it. Yeah, I told him God healed you. That that was the text I sent. God healed it, you. Listen, Tiffany, it should be it should be here. God used me to heal him, I should say. All right. Okay. You need to point him to Christ. That is your opportunity to lead him to the Lord so that he can be saved. It's not about your gift and it's mm -hmm. not about your healing. Yeah. It's about him becoming a child of God, becoming born again. Mm -hmm. that's number one number two you, you need to that. submit that gift to God 
and let him direct how you use it, not Google, not online. <laughs> I'm Google I'm I'm dead. Okay. Not online. Okay. And you're not, you're not, you're not running around looking for who to heal. He will use you as the occasion arises. Okay. I'm not about to set up shop and say, if you have demons, come. I get it. Because I've they, only... They, I've... Will, they will hear about what God is doing in IBBC and mm -hmm. they will come and will point them to Christ. And when they see the demonstration of his power, they will sit down in their right minds and they will learn because that's what we see in, in, in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. The guy, the, the, demon, the demoniac of Gadari, he wanted to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, no. And tell everybody what God has done for you. Mm -hmm. And he went about telling folks. As a matter of fact, he became an evangelist. How do I know? He won over 10 cities. Because of that one act of mercy, where Jesus cast out the demons in him and told the demons to go in the swine. Ten cities he won for Christ. Mm. So it's not about you. It's not about the gift. It's about Christ, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Von? So I would, can I just finish that? I, I just, yeah. One second. So it would, I would only lay hands on my, my family knows and my, my friends. It's not like I went around trying to, you know, but, but when, but it is something like, should I just continue with my family and friends? And it's only when they need it. Like God used me when, and I've, I've healed my pregnant friend's baby when, she, when she was pregnant. You know, so I mean, I know my healing. I would see, I, I know, I already knew that that was my gift. And it's not like I wanted to just, like you said, I guess, pray and just ask God to lead me how to use my gift. But I just wanted to, um, yeah, just kind of figure that out. So I won't Google, I won't do anything like that. I'll just continue, I guess, doing the way he's been doing, just having me do friends and family. Cause I don't know if I want to lay hands on everybody. Keep submitting that gift to God. He gave it to you for a reason. Yeah. Keep submitting it to him. That Father, this vessel is willing. However that you want to use it, mm -hmm. just lead me. So bring the people. He'll yeah. prompt you. The Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man. Please look for that scripture and put it up. I will wait for the prompting of the spirit of God. Before I lay hands. Mm -hmm. So it's not something I do willy-nilly because I have the gift of deliverance. So I'm, 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 no. I wait until God says. Yeah. And you will know. Mm -hmm. You will know. There will, there will be a knowing inside of you that you should lay hands on that person. Okay. All right, great. Thank but you. continue in the word and continue to submit the gift to God. Let him perfect it and let him direct the use. That sounds great. Thank you, Pastor Ma. You're welcome. Mufon? Good morning, Pastor Mo. Good morning. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so my question is, you were saying that, you know, that um, that you somebody can't be around you without you channeling. I think you said channeling them back to the word. No, 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 no. That word channel, I'm not comfortable with it. Okay. I don't channel nothing. Okay. What I what I meant, because you see, they take all these words and they, they give it all kinds of stupid meanings. You can't even use simple English anymore. I have an ulterior motive anytime I'm, not, I'm around someone who's not born again. I understand that. <laughs> And what is that material motive? I want to lead them to Christ. Correct. So I'm looking for that gap. I'm looking for that where I will bring the conversation around the word and around the work of Christ. So when I use the word channel, I'm not talking about what they do out there. 
I'm not channeling mm -hmm. nothing. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. redirecting the conversation. I'm redirecting the conversation to a place where I can present Christ. I understand. Uh -huh. Thank you. But my, so my question was, how do, in, as we, in our daily lives, how does that practically look like for us? Um, how can we, apart from, you know, saying whether it's God bless you, how do we now insert, because it has to be intentional. And we know that the Christian life is intentional because I mean, the whole armor is intentional, right? So I understand the intentionality of the Christian walk, but how do we do that in our daily life consistently in a way that's meaningful and not just I superfluous? I pray for God. Okay. The Bible says Paul watered, Paul planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. Okay. So there are people that I'm just going to plant the word. Okay. There are people mm. that I'm going to water the word that someone else planted. Mm. And then there are people that are ready to be saved. Okay. So I, I, I say to the Lord, Father, lead me okay. to those that need salvation. Mm. Open my eyes to see and to recognize and to be sensitive. I will start a conversation with a complete stranger because I want to find out whether they're born again or not. Okay. So talking about the intentionality, I love your shirt. That color suits you. Mm. That opens up the conversation in a very relaxed way. And then we can okay. start talking about this, that, and the other. I bring sports in. They either like basketball or they, or they like football. I understand both sports. Or golf. Or whatever. And from talking to them, I am, I am sensitive and I'm listening and I'm looking for that place where I'm going to insert Jesus. And God will create that opportunity for you. If it's someone that's been hearing the word and they're on the verge of being saved, and you're the vessel that's available, God will create that opportunity. You lead the person to the Lord. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Last two questions, Juan and Bridget, and I got to run. Juan? Uh, hey, Pastor. Um, it's not a question, but it's a, a testimony. I was going to say it yesterday in the chat. I forgot. So, Talking about healing, um, yesterday my stomach was hurting. I was just, I didn't feel good at all. And after dinner, I felt even worse. So I just sat, sat outside and talking to my parents. And I was like, I wasn't feeling good. And I was like, okay, let me hit, lay hands on myself. So I laid hands on myself and I was, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. And then I just kept, you know, we kept talking. I was praying in tongues um, but to myself, you know, just just calm, relax. You know, I already laid hands on myself. So I was like, okay, I'm good. And then later on, like 20 minutes later, my mom came up to me. She's like, how you feeling? I was like, oh, okay. And then she went, laid hands on me. Same thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. And then she just, just kept, you know, just kept going on. And um, like, what, like 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, I'm, I realized, you know, the, like I wasn't inflamed, inflamed anymore. I didn't have heartburn, perfectly fine. Amen. And I, you know, I didn't even realize it. You know, I just, I was like, oh yeah, I'm not sick anymore. I was like, you know, praise God. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> now, laying got, up your hands, mom, got your mom laying hands down too. <laughs> yes. She finally learned. She finally learned. Thank God. Catholic woman laying hands. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Last question, Bridget. Good morning, Pastor Man. Hey, Amen. Good morning. Uh, I wanted to introduce you to my mom. She's in here thrift shopping. Oh, wow. And I, I was going to ask you if you could just say a little word of prayer with her. Mama, this is, uh, see there, this is Reverend Dr. Pastor Mo. Okay, hey, Mom. Pastor Mo. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> dealing with, she's dealing with, uh, diabetes and uh the onset of dementia and um i just took her to get her hair done so she's looking 
really cute right now. <laughs> there you go. Um, she's All right, Mom. Oh, yes. Let's, saints of God, let's agree in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you for the life of our mother. It is you that have kept her all these years. And for that, we're grateful. Thank you for provision. Thank you for protection. Thank you that thank you, Lord. experienced the joy of raising her children and seeing her grandchildren. That is a promise from you. You said we will see our children's children. Father, we thank you for your manifold blessings you, upon her. Thank you, Father. Now we stand in the power of your spirit and your word. We yes, rebuke yes. diabetes yes. in the name in of the name Jesus. Of Jesus. We command that disease to disintegrate now in the name of Jesus. There will be a testimony concerning this morning. When next you see your doctor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, regardless of the cause, regardless of the duration of it in your body, we rebuke the spirit of infirmity. We rebuke in particular... The spirit that deals with diabetes, we break your power, we break your influence, we command you to go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says the memory of the righteous is blessed. Thank you, Lord. Father, we confess that word over mom's mind. We decree and we declare that she has the mind of Christ. In yes. the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 103 that you renew her youth as the eagles. Lord, that you will renew her youth according to your word in the name of Jesus. name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord God, that Bridget will testify. Mom will testify. Yes, Lord. Your goodness. And Thank the prayer you, that we offer this morning on Thank our behalf. You. Lord, take all the glory, take all the praise. Yes, Lord. In the name Thank of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for that. Thank you for that prayer. Amen. And um, I also I also wanted to, uh, if you don't mind, I just want to say a little prayer for you as you go. Amen. Um, and, and saints, please join in with me. Somebody could take over. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to give Pastor Reverend Dr. Mo traveling mercies, her and her family, Father. We ask you, we bind every step of the enemy, everything that comes to come against them. We bind all seen and unseen dangers. We thank God for Brother George. God, we ask you to strengthen him in the name of Jesus. Take him in your arms, God. Comfort him, God. Father, you know all things, God. say, God. We praise you for victory on today, God. He knows how to get God, we thank you for healing. How do you know say everyone on this call, God? Oh, God, we thank you for the today, God. God, fresh and north, God. He told us how to get God. God, she's a strong one of the house, God. How do you know say? Keep it. And how you say even when we say we're strong, God, we thank you for your word, God. Hide your word in our hearts so we won't sin again. But we praise you, God. We give you all the glory. God is good and all is well on this day. And we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Jesus, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you all. Um, <clears throat> Barring delays and flights or whatever, we should still be online tomorrow, 9 Central Standard. All right? So I'll see you tomorrow, Matthew 10. Amen. Matthew 10.